Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, Senior Government Minister Reginald Austri defends the Cabinet decision to rent a property for the Prime Minister for $32,000 a month. A new cell phone policy is expected to promote better customer service within the public service and plans to establish a national database of the country's senior citizens continues to fall behind. The details coming up. to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better. First up in the news, this is the house that a number of questions have been raised about in the Mont Daniel location. Critics of the Prime Minister say it's too costly an accommodation for him in light of the country's challenges. Supporters of the Prime Minister say, however, he has been living in the conference room on the State House ground since Hurricane Maria, and therefore it's time he moves out to much safer and appropriate accommodation. Cabinet ministers have defended the move to have the Prime Minister housed in more suitable accommodation, but there have been concerns that Prime the Prime Minister himself would rather not have the public opera over the property. Cabinet members have insisted that in spite of the Prime Minister's feelings on the issue, it's time for him to move out of his current accommodation, which they say is not suitable for the Prime Minister and his family. At the heart of the controversy seems to be the rent on this property. Channel 5 News understands it would, be about, it would cost about $32,000 a month. While the Prime Minister has not moved in, the case has been made by some supporters that other regional leaders have suitable accommodation. Why not Dominica's Prime Minister? Others believe those who oppose the accommodation do not respect the position of Prime Minister. There was also talk of rescinding the Cabinet decision to provide the accommodation for the Prime Minister, but it's not clear whether that will work as members of Cabinet have spoken out publicly in support of going ahead with their original decision. Senior Minister in the Roosevelt Skerritt Administration, Honorable Reginald Austri, has strongly defended Cabinet's decision to provide suitable accommodation for the Prime Minister. Mr. Austri spoke on the controversial issue with Simeon Albert on Kyrie FM. One of the conditions of the Prime Minister's terms of engagement mm -hmm. is that he has to be afforded a fully furnished house by the state to begin with. Right. So... This is not a favor that we do in Roosevelt Skerritt. Mm -hmm. This is not a reward that Roosevelt Skerritt is getting for the tremendous work that he has done in this country over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. and, and we can enumerate them on our fingers and our toes, and we'll still have to get two more hands and two more feet to, to, to add the number of things Skerritt has done. But it's not a reward right, right. to Roosevelt Skerritt. Right. It's part of the terms of the engagement of the Prime Minister mm -hmm. of Dominica. That is one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, Simeon, mm -hmm. the Prime Minister did not choose the residents. Right. The Cabinet chose mm -hmm. and decided on a proper accommodation for the Prime Minister of this country. Mm -hmm. And I am part of this Cabinet. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. The third 
the third thing I want to say, Simeon, mm -hmm. is it's the Prime Minister's fault why today we're having that debate. Mm -hmm. Because in the last cabinet, mm -hmm. the cabinet sat and took a decision to build a house for the Prime Minister of the country, whoever becomes Prime Minister or was the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. It was not going to be a house for Roosevelt's carrot. The same way we build accommodation for the president. Right, right, right. We did not build an accommodation for Charles Avery. Right. His Excellency. Right. We built an accommodation for whoever becomes the president of Dominica, mm -hmm. whether under our government or under another government, that president is entitled to live in the house, in the state house that was provided for by the president, mm -hmm. for the president. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the prime minister in his good wisdom said to the cabinet mm -hmm. that he was not going to undertake that project to build a house for the prime minister because there were too many Dominicans who were still recovering from hurricane it was Eric at the time and Maria at the time. Right. But we knew that where the Prime Minister was living after the hurricane, Simeon, mm -hmm. was a conference room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the conference room mm -hmm. of the President's compound that was not designed, it was designed to have conferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was outfitted because yes. you could not find a proper house in the country that was suited to the security features that were necessary to protect the Prime Minister and his family. Austri says the Prime Minister had himself rescinded a prior decision to find him new accommodation. He said no, he was not going to do it. Mm -hmm. See, when the Prime Minister traveled out of state, mm -hmm. I was chairing a cabinet meeting mm -hmm. and we took, the Prime Minister had rescinded that first cabinet decision mm -hmm. in his absence. We took a decision to bring that back in cabinet mm -hmm. and to take another cabinet decision mm -hmm. and to instruct the committee to go ahead with the design and plans for a residence for the prime minister. Mm -hmm. So when Skerritt came back, Skerritt overturned that cabinet decision that we had taken in his absence. You understand yes, me? Yes, 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 yes. And the residence of Skerritt is, is unsuitable, Simeon. Mm -hmm. I believe... Mm -hmm. that a country is judged by the level of its leadership mm -hmm. and the pride that we place in our leaders in this country. Austria says their search led them to three buildings, one for $25,000, another owned by a Dominican for $40,000, and a third for $32,000, the last one chosen for its location and security features. Austria has strongly criticized the opposition leader, who he says has written to the audit department, threatening to take action if... Cabinet's decision is not reversed. In other news now, the public sector has taken a number of measures to ensure it is prepared for the 2020 hurricane season. Cabinet Secretary Steve Farrell highlights some of the measures taken since the last meeting of the National Emergency Planning Organization, NEPO. From my last check, all of the ministries, are, the, the subcommittees are manned by ministries. So most of those committees are meeting uh, based on, on your directive to, to improve their own terms of reference, mm -hmm. communication, supplies, um, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, housing, uh, shelter, environment. Uh, environment, and other subcommittees. But at the same time, ministries are asked now to review their own, their own um, disaster plans to ensure that the ministry itself is prepared. So apart from preparing the program, uh, for the national program, you have to prepare your own ministry's, um, all your mm. own ministry's uh, uh, disaster plan. An above normal 2020 Atlantic hurricane season ex is expected this year. The outlook predicts a 60% chance of an above normal season, a 30% chance of a near normal season, and only a 10% chance of a below normal season. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1 through to November 30. In other news now, further delays in developing a national database of Dominica's elderly. Here is Andrea Louis with more. Creating a database to keep track of the country's senior citizens has been on the radar for the Dominica Council on Aging for some time now. The database would be useful in keeping accurate count of the island's elderly, as well as providing assistance when needed and ensuring all who need help get help. 
Vice President of the Dominica Council on Aging, Enzo Irish, says while things were looking promising to start collecting the necessary information, the project is still experiencing setbacks. We do not have all the resources, right? And one of the things we are trying to do, and in fact, we made representation to government for, to get some more field officers. Because you need field officers to go out to get your data, you know, um, to do your, your, your elderly find, if you will, for want of a better word. And so the resources are kind of limited. But I can tell you aggressively, we have, of course, we have our president, Ophelia Maria, and a very good board. And they, we are trying, they're trying really to see how much we can link with government. Of course, government have been giving us subvention and support. But we need more clout in the sense that we need field officers, we need financial support so that we can go aggressively in terms of um, doing that sort of find and getting the statistical data uh, on board. While the information, when collected, will be extremely useful to the Dominica Council on Aging, it will also better assist regional and international agencies who want to lend support to Dominica's elderly. Because very often when the international agency, when we make representation and contact, they ask for statistics. And that is a very good point that you raised. And certainly that is something in the new year that, uh, uh, that is something in the new year we want to embark upon in terms of, you know, doing some further investigations and getting some statistics to know what is happening um, island-wide. You are watching Channel 5 News. We'll have more after this. Are you still washing your hands regularly, wearing your mask in public, and practicing social distancing? Zero cases does not mean COVID-free. Stay home if you're not well to keep others from getting sick. Continue to avoid crowds in public spaces. Always keep your guard up. We're still fighting this together. This is a public service announcement from the Dominica Red Cross. A new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play, and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. Thank you for staying with us. No major changes on the cards for the distribution of financial assistance under the Education Trust Fund. Here's Andrea Louis with more. That's according to Chairman of the Fund, Willie Favrier. The Education Trust Fund was established in the 1980s to provide financial assistance to secondary school students in the form of transportation, school fees and CXE fees. The suspension of school for the past few months has led to no transportation allowance being distributed. And while this can be seen as a saving, Mr. Favrier says there are still other expenses to meet. It means that um, children will not be traveling as much, so our transportation expenses will be less. Um, but the other things, <coughs> well, school registration, that's another thing. Um, we might not have as many requests for school registration. Although, even if they are at home and doing work, I mean, the school still provides the service, so they might still have to pay some school registration. So we might have to help in that. Um, and CXE, obviously, various exam the school examinations, they have to pay for that, those things. So it will not affect, except for transportation. That's where I see there might be a reduction in the need for transportation allowance. In the age of COVID-19, learning at home was the method employed by the Ministry of Education as children were forbidden to come to the classroom to continue their schooling. Favrier understands and supports this move but does not foresee the fund investing in devices to ensure children are well equipped to learn from home. Well, um, it's not something that we have considered but um, what, what we've noticed is that the government has taken, the Ministry of Education itself has taken on that responsibility. At one time they provided um, tablets to many students and the government has also taken up, um, remember at one time we, we were facilitating um, some textbooks scheme. The government has taken that over. We don't, have, we don't do textbooks anymore. And we've never done uniforms. The, the, the Ministry of Education deals with uniform allowances. So um, <laughs> providing um, materials such as uh, electronic equipment, I would, I, I would think that um, the government will take that over. <laughs> 
Earlier this year, Mr. Fravier revealed that the two main fundraising events for the institution had to be put on hold due to COVID-19. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. The introduction of a cell phone policy could help the public service derive greater efficiency and improve poor customer service. Customers are complaining that in some instances the quality of service is not up to par with government employees on their phones paying little attention to customers. Customers say they are frustrated by that behavior which is a deterrent for those who would like to do business with government. With reference to the cell phones, we have for the past um, couple of months been discussing a cell phone policy that we hope to bring, bring forward. But we do take the point that cell phones mm. are a distraction and we should do everything to minimize them and get them out of the workplace. Uh, one of the issues that we have with stopping cell phones now is in the absence of a proper data um, management mm -hmm. system. We, we rely on cell phones ourselves, especially during the, the COVID. Uh, uh, I mean, you use people's private phones to get messages across. So we are, we are very conscious of the problem, but we're hoping that the, the new ICT upgrade will help us monitor better the uh, information flow within the ministry. The chief personnel officer says there are other measures being taken to improve the quality of customer service at government offices. So one of the things that we looked at in terms of improving the delivery of service is also the physical location. So we are starting with the government headquarters. Very soon you will come there. Mm -hmm. um, we are setting up an information customer service desk mm -hmm. um, on the ground floor. Um, we've already set up a television screen for digital information to be provided. So when you come, you can see ministries, what yeah. floor, you know, what services are available. We'll have videos that will be played throughout the day and we will have an individual who is there will be, be able to provide the service. And we want to be able to do that at each ministry. I, I believe too that the services that the public that we provide is also a reflection of our education system. Mm -hmm. I, I believe we have to get people to appreciate that. Um, the whole concept of, of being courteous, being yeah. respectful, yeah. being accountable, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and the gentleman mm -hmm. made a point that he would go to a ministry, person on, on, person phone. on the phone, they don't acknowledge the person. Yeah. I mean, you, these are basic things. I mean, um, in many respects, you don't have to go to school. <laughs> to, 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 yeah. And everybody should to be. be. To be taught these things. Yeah. and a drive to educate members of the Dominica Cancer Society on the use of technology. The need for such training arose during the lockdown measures due to the COVID-19 crisis in Dominica. Vice President of the Dominica Cancer Society, Kathleen Conlilius, says the limited interaction with patients, survivors and staff exposed the need to have everyone on a similar level as regards technology use for social interaction. One of the things I think that has been most affected for us as survivors especially, and even our supporters, we have not been able to physically meet. And one of the, the we, although there are means by which we can meet, one of the things we have come to the realization that many of our members, they do not possess the necessary know-hows or skills to use the mediums that are available. So post-COVID, Maybe as a society we can provide some form of training to our membership and God forbid that this happens again. Cornelia says social interaction and easy communication among members is extremely useful to the society, especially for those undergoing treatment. Our inability to provide that physical support for one another has proven to be a challenge and it can be sometimes even disheartening and discouraging to many persons, especially those presently undergoing treatment, when they see many persons around them are falling. So that in its sense, I believe, has affected us as a group. And um, if we have to address anything, I think this is one of the areas. How do we maintain that interaction, that camaraderie among one another, even when we are social distancing? Flow helps you stay connected to what matters. Simple plans and a better network mean that you can enjoy seven days of unlimited social messaging, three gigabytes of reliable data to use as you like, 700 local anywhere calls and texts with the always-on prepaid plan, all for $29. Keep your number when you switch to Dominica's most reliable LTE network. Buy wherever you top up. Switch to Flow. It only gets better.
a new in-home experience is here. All your services bundled into one simple plan. Faster, more reliable Wi-Fi so that you can binge, play and stream uninterrupted. Unlimited flow local landline minutes mean you can talk and talk and talk. Plus the best in TV entertainment with over 120 channels and 29 in HD. All for $160 a month with the new All-In Bundle. With flow, it only gets better. To end the news, a look again at the headline. Senior Government Minister Reginald Austri defends a cabinet decision to rent a property for the Prime Minister for $32,000 a month. A new cell phone policy expected to promote better customer service within the public service. And plans to establish a national database of the country's senior citizens continues to fall behind. You may access the news on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.